So, is there anything else that may influence the hydrostatic pressure? The answer is yes. As the density of the fluid increases, the pressure exerted will increase. In other words, the hydrostatic pressure will become greater. Imagine a one-gallon container full of 10 pounds per gallon fluid. The weight of one gallon of fluid will be 10 multiplied by 1, which equals 10 pounds. If this weight was acting on an area of 10 square inches, the pressure would be 10 divided by 10, which equals 1 pound per square inch, or PSI. If the 10 pounds per gallon fluid is replaced by a more dense fluid of 15 pounds per gallon, the weight of one gallon of this fluid would be 15 pounds. The pressure exerted on 10 square inches would be 15 divided by 10, which equals 1.5 psi. We have now seen how vertical depth and the density of fluid affects the pressure at the bottom of a well, and it is the combination of these two factors that give us our primary barrier and thus our well control. To simplify the calculation for finding out the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of the well, a pressure gradient is used. This simply means that the denser the fluid, the greater the pressure. And this can be expressed as pounds per square inch per foot and is abbreviated to PSI per foot. This table shows some examples of pressure gradients for different fluids. If we take fresh water, for example, its density expressed in pounds per gallon is 8.33, and if we multiply it by 0.052, a constant, we find that the pressure gradient is 0.433 psi per foot. Another form of applied pressure we see is formation pressure. This is the fluid pressure found within the pore spaces of the formation. Formation pressure can force fluids into the wellbore. In drilling and completion operations, we use the hydrostatic pressure of fluids, such as drilling mud, to counter the effects of formation pressure and keep the wellbore contained and controlled. In situations where the formation pressure exceeds the hydrostatic pressure of the drilling fluid, there is the potential for an influx of formation fluids resulting in a well kick and even a blowout. So, formation pressure is the pressure exerted by the fluids in the pore spaces of the formation. That's not as complicated as it sounds. If we attach a pressure gauge to the bottom of a bucket, we see that whilst the bucket remains empty, the pressure gauge will read zero. It's what we call gauge pressure. When we start filling the bucket with fresh water, which has a pressure gradient of 0 0.433 psi per foot, we will see the gauge rise due to hydrostatic pressure. If we fill the bucket to a depth of one foot, it is quite easy to calculate the hydrostatic pressure using the simple formula hydrostatic pressure equals the height, or depth, of the water, one foot, multiplied by the pressure gradient of 0 0.433 psi per foot, that gives us a pressure of 0 0.433 psi, as seen on the pressure gauge. Let's take another empty bucket, but instead of filling it with water, this time we will start by filling it with golf balls. As you can see, the pressure gauge remains at zero. Therefore, even though the weight of the bucket will have increased due to the golf balls, the pressure hasn't altered. Now let's see what happens when we pour the water back into the bucket. Firstly, we don't need as much water to reach the one-foot level, but more importantly, the pressure gauge is now reading 0 0.433 psi, the same as it was when there was only water in the bucket. Despite there not being as much water in the second bucket in terms of volume, the height is the same, and consequently, so is the pressure. What has been happening in our bucket is the same as what happens in a porous formation, such as sandstone. This shows us that the formation pressure is only equal to the hydrostatic pressure exerted by the column of fluid. Bottom hole pressure is a term used to take into account all of the pressure exerted on the bottom of the well. Most of the pressure comes from the hydrostatic pressure of the fluid column, so if the mud isn't moving then the bottom hole pressure will be the same as the hydrostatic pressure. However, if the mud is being circulated in the well, then the pressure exerted to move the mud up the annulus between the wellbore and drill string, for instance, has to be considered 
as the effect will be to increase bottom hole pressure. The smaller the annulus, the greater the pressure. Any restrictions on surface that affect the flow of mud returning to surface will also add to the bottom hole pressure. There are two conditions that a well may be in, either overbalanced or underbalanced. Overbalanced is when the force exerted by the drilling fluid column is greater than the force exerted by the formation fluid pressure. This condition provides hydrostatic control of the formation fluid during normal drilling operations. Underbalanced is when the force exerted by the drilling fluid column is less than the force exerted by the formation fluid pressure. In normal drilling operations, an underbalanced wellbore is undesirable because we could get an influx of formation fluids into the wellbore, also known as a kick, potentially leading to a blowout. A drill bit can be seen here cutting rock with the drilling fluid transporting the cuttings back to the surface. In well control, the hydrostatic pressure created by the drilling fluid column must exceed the pressure exerted by formation fluids. Consider a situation where the formation pressure is 5,000 psi. If the well is 10,000 feet deep, filled with mud weighing 10 pounds per gallon, or 0.52 psi per foot, having multiplied 10 by 0.052, the bottom hole pressure would be 5,200 psi. This creates an overbalanced condition, as there is an overbalance of 200 psi. This would be enough pressure to overcome the formation pressure of 5,000 psi, and so keep the formation fluid from entering the well. If the same well was filled with water, which weighs 8.33 pounds per gallon, or 0.433 psi per foot, having multiplied 8.33 by 0.052, the pressure exerted at the bottom of the well would only be 4,330 psi. If the formation pressure is 5,000 psi, the well is underbalanced by 670 psi, and formation fluids may enter the well as the formation pressure is greater than the wellbore pressure. An influx is an unplanned entry of water, gas, oil, or other formation fluid into the wellbore during drilling, more commonly known as a kick. For this to happen, the well must be underbalanced. In other words, the pressure of the formation fluids is greater than the bottom hole pressure. The calculation of the volume of any influx is an integral part of standard well control procedures. If the well is not shut in by closing a blowout preventer, a kick can quickly escalate into a blowout when the formation fluids reach the surface. If the influx contains gas that expands rapidly as it flows up the wellbore, this will make the problem worse by decreasing the effective weight of the drilling mud. The definition of a blowout is the uncontrolled flow of formation fluids into the wellbore. This often results in a catastrophic flow of hydrocarbons to surface, and if they are then ignited, the effects can be devastating. Where formation fluids flow into another formation and not to the surface, this is called an underground blowout. However, many underground blowouts will lead to a surface blowout. When we have reached total depth for a particular hole section and need to run casing, we have to trip out, which means bringing the drill bit to surface. This also has to take place when the drill bit gets worn beyond practical use. If there are several thousand feet of drill pipe in the hole, this is no small task. To speed this up, we usually remove three sections of drill pipe at a time, known as a stand, and rack it in the derrick. This makes tripping out and back in a much faster process. Even a simple bit change operation can take a whole day to complete, as the entire drill string must be withdrawn from the hole, the bit replaced, and then the entire string fed back into the hole before drilling can recommence. Historically, tripping is one of the most critical times for well control because mud is not being circulated and the bit is not at the bottom of the well. 
As the pipe is removed from the well, an equivalent volume of mud must be used to fill the well to prevent hydrostatic pressure from falling and the well becoming underbalanced. It is vitally important that we monitor for the correct...